We are gathered here today to memorialize the 2023-2024 San Jose Shark season. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast of your favorite level losers in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day, even when they are one of the worst teams in modern NHL history. So if you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts, Or you can watch on YouTube as well. And the San Jose Sharks have wrapped up the regular season. Um, And we're going to start to shift through the wreckage. That was the 2023-2024 Sharks. We'll talk about um, just what we went through this season. Kind of look at what's next kind of for the Sharks and for the show, nothing bad. Um, and then look at uh, the NHL uh, put out their final uh, prospect rankings. So we'll take a peek at those now that we know at least where the every the picks are going to be heading into the NHL uh, draft lottery. So before we get to all that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Uh, I admit it, I have a competitive side and a big fan of Monopoly Go. The mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly so you can join your friends and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. And we are here, the, the one of the longest seasons in San Jose Sharks history. Um, as they lose 5-1 to, to the Calgary Flames, we're not going to do a normal breakdown because uh, the Sharks... Um, yeah, it was they, they scored with nine seconds left to, to that. That's basically the highlight. Uh, they scored with nine seconds left to get keep Dustin Wolf from getting his first career shutout uh, and thoroughly outplayed. And I, I think we as Sharks fans are ready to quickly turn the page on this season and start looking ahead uh, to what's next. Uh, so let's let's start with, with kind of what we've witnessed, right? And the, the season has been a long and painful and brutal season um, for Sharks fans, right? And the hope is that May 6th or 7th is we 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 get to that prize of winning the, the, the draft and making what we just witnessed um, worth it, right? That that is that is the goal, right? And since last summer, I've been very much on the like this season's gonna be bad, but if we can get to the end and, and put ourselves in the best possible position to land this top end dra- this first overall pick, um, and get a Mac one Celebrini, who is a franchise changing player, uh, not a generational player like a um, you know uh Connor Bedard or Matthews or one of those, but he is a franchise changing player. Um then it's going to make it all work. And even if they don't, right, even if they end up second or God forbid third, uh, which is possible, but it's still like you, you, you've, you've done, you've done the work and now it's going to be up to Mike Greer to try to build. And that's what we'll talk about in the next segment. But um, just to kind of put a bow or not a bow, but just kind of some of the like final interesting stats from this season so uh the san jose sharks finished the season 19 54 and 9 uh with 47 points so they didn't get to 20 wins um brutal minus 150 goal differential which is one of the like all-time worst um yeah, it's it's up there uh, as as one of the all time worst goal differentials. Um, nowhere near like the ninety two ninety three uh, Sharks, but um, this puts them in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the tenth worst um, in NHL history, just between the nineteen eighty eighty one Jets and the nineteen eighty five eighty six Red Wings, who had minus uh, one fifty four and one forty nine respectively. Um, so. Yeah, 
you 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 witness a 82 game car wreck is basically what you witness with the sharks um and there's plenty of bright spots we're gonna we have a lot of time to look at the bright spots and ask big questions and all that stuff but um th this will be hopefully this will be the low point of the rebuild right um you know it, it's easy to tear things down and this is the this is the consequences of tearing things down is putting guys in positions that you know uh, Mikel Granlin, who had a really fine season, but on a good team as a three C, not your one C. You know, asking Mario Faro, who on a good team is probably your fourth defenseman, not your number one defenseman. Um, having, you know, a bunch of young players playing a lot of minutes, making mistakes, like all this was was part of the plan is to tear things down. That way you can build a sustainable product. And the Sharks have done that. And this is the consequences of tearing things down. Um, is you're going to have what we had. Maybe not to the extent, but now is where you can start to hopefully build. And that is that is going to be Mike Greer's big thing this season is we can't have, you know, a minus 150 goal differential getting blown out you know multiple multiple like nine one nine two ten like multiple losses like that um and like those are going to happen in almost season but you know you can have four different nine game losing streaks all that stuff like that is that is that is going to be my career what you have to kind of start to build to build to fix and we'll discuss how he attempts to do that but some positives this season and, you know, just kind of highlight Mikel Granlin, who in 69 games, very nice, had 60 points this season. So was kind of flirting with being a point per game player this year. He had 12 goals, 48 assists. Um, William Eklund finished second on the team playing 80 games um, with 16 goals, 29 assists with 45 points. Fabian Zettelin, the only San Jose Shark to suit up for every game, played 82 games, 20, led the team in goals with 24 goals, also 20 assists for 44 points. Um, Philip Sedina, 72 games this year, 13 goals, 10 assists, 23. That's fourth on the team. This is players who left, you know, um, who are still left on the team. Hurdle would have been up there more, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, like, there, there's plenty of, like, right spots to to this team and kind of what's what's to come for the sharks and um like that that's and we, we even talk begin the season right was what's the who's the most important person in san jose this year and it's william Eklund. and i don't see how you can look at this season and say it's anything but a success for william Eklund and his development and yes there was plenty of issues and you know we had some experimentation with him playing at center but you know looking back at the season the way he developed and growed and played as as an every situation type of player um you can't feel excited for at least his future and again once this team has more talent around um the future of the san jose Sharks. so we're hoping this is the low point that this is this is rock bottom and that we can start to kind of build out of what was you know phoenix from the ashes whatever you want to whatever metaphor you want to use um for what's to come next because again we know we knew it was going to be this we knew it was gonna be bad maybe not this bad um but it's over guys we made it through it um now comes the fun part and i think that's the what happens next so we're going to talk about kind of what what's on the horizon for the sharks kind of for the rest of the off season um talk about what's kind of on the immediate horizon for the podcast and we're going to talk about some of the uh the the final uh central scouting rankings here uh in just one minute Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. They save you time and money so you can provide your family with financial safety net starting today. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for a million dollars of coverage. Some options even offer same-day approval. 
and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Polygenius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you talk through it. Um, your life insurance policy at work may not offer you enough protection for your family's needs. Even worse, it may not come with you if you leave your job. So Polygenius, they have no incentive to recommend one insurance server so you can trust their guidance. They have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found the best fit for their needs. So check life insurance off your to-do list with Polygenius. Head over to polygenius.com slash lockdownHL or click on the link in the description to get your free insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's polygenius.com slash LockedOnNHL. All right, so what's what's next, right? Um, for for the sharks and kind of what, where does Mike Greer go from here? Because um, that that this is a very important summer for for Mike Greer, um, regardless of what happens with the draft, and you know the draft is a huge part of it. But um, regardless of the Sharks pick one, two, or three, and what happens with the Penguins pick, which right now. As of right now, um, the Sharks have the first pick, at least going into the draft lottery odds, and the 14th pick from the Penguins. And I've already had a bajillion people ask me, well, what should the Sharks do? What should the Sharks do? What should the guys? I have a lot of content to fill between now and remember, we are five days a week um, through mid August ish. Like that is a lot of shows to fill. So I'm, again, I don't want to be selfish, but. We, I got a lot of shows to fill. <laughs> so we will get through through what that we will look at a bunch of different options, trading up, trading back, packaging picks, like, you know, trading that pick for an NHL, an established NHL player. Like there's going to be plenty of time to, to try to figure that out. So, um, but yes, yeah, the sharks are going to have going into the draft lottery. They will have pick one pick, uh, pick 14, Pick 33, which is the first uh, pick in the second round, and pick 42, the Devils pick, which is the 10th pick um, in the second round. So the Sharks have a ton of ammunition to do whatever they want, basically. If they want to trade up, trade down, um, whatever they want to do, they they can do it because they've stockpiled these really great assets, um, whether it's from the Timo Meyer trade, from the Eric Carlson trade, whatever it is. Like you have, um, and their just own ability to be bad. Um, so that they have a ton of, of picks to do plenty of, of stuff this, this trade deadline. So... Um, but I think kind of that's the next thing, right? Is what, whenever the draft lottery is, it's kind of figuring out where you're actually picking. So we'll know May 6th or May 7th. Um, I assume they'll probably announce that here soonish once they kind of get the, the schedule set up here for the first round of the playoffs. Um, and then of course, as the second round, um, the next kind of big thing for the sharks is also free agency um and the sharks are going to be you would hope or have the ability to be very active in free agency um and that doesn't mean i don't think my girls just go out and sign a bunch of dudes just to sign a bunch of dudes but they're going to have to sign players because um they need uh one to hit the, the salary cap floor um and two like i don't think you can just run out a bunch of children like we saw at the end of the, the season, right? Um, you know, right now they're scheduled to have about $35 million in cap space if the salary cap is at that 87.5, which is kind of projected to be. I'm sure we'll get a final number getting much closer to free agency. But um, I think for Mike Greer is finding players who can be part of the solution and help this team kind of, again, I think the big, the big thing is going to be starting to build, right? We tore it all down. How do you start to build? And I think finding veteran guys who can come in here and kind of help set the standard, especially with how many veteran players the Sharks have lost, right? Um, even going back to, you know, Joe Pavelski, Patrick Marlowe, Joe Thornton, Brent Burns, um, you know, like Tomas Hurdle, like all these guys who are not here that were here, you know, even a couple years ago, you know, even when I started kind of doing this podcast, right? 
Um, you know, I started in February 2020 and look at look at the roster then compared to the roster now. Like it's basically Vlasic, um, Ferraro and Logan Couture, who Co Couture, you know, played six games this year. Like the, the, the roster is completely been turned over. Um, but how do you add to some of these guys so that way we can instill those win as cliche as it sounds, instill those winning habits, right? Teaching some of these young guys how to win, how to play winning hockey, um, and start to instill that. Again, I don't expect the Sharks to be a winning team next year, but we can't have a repeat of, of what we saw this year. You need to see, like I said earlier, you need to see this team be more competitive on a night-in, night-out basis. And I, I think Greer is going to do that. Um, and we'll look at... Again, I'm excited to look at free. We haven't been able to really look at free agents um, on this podcast because the Sharks have always been so tight to the salary cap. Um, it's going to be fun to actually look at if they want to go big game hunting and free agency. But I think, again, I think Greer is going to be smart about trying to get the right people in, making sure that they fit what the Sharks are trying to do, make sure they, they can help instill this new Sharks culture um, and kind of go from there. So, um so yeah, we we have a lot of free agency and a lot of draft stuff that, that's going to be coming on, you know, going on this summer. So, um, you know, and I think the other the kind of what's next is is the Will Smith decision, and of course we're not going to do it right now. And I think, um, you know, Ryan Leonard did say he was planning on going back, but things can change, right? Cooley, for example, um, the the Arizona slash Utah one, um, like there's there's things will change. And I think for Smith taking the time to kind of decompress after a season, especially a heartbreaking season where, with that and look at where the sharks is going. And if you know, you, you have to think if the sharks do lay in Celebrini, um, that'd be very enticing for Smith to kind of come out and be, you know, Smith and Celebrini, you throw those guys on the cover of the news, uh, on the news guide or whatever, and you're, you're, you're good to go. So, um, you know, yeah, there's a, a lot that's coming up next. Um, and even for the show, right? Just, you know, maybe this is your first run with Locked on Sharks. Um, maybe this is your first time listening to Locked on Sharks. But um, I think as as we go into the off season here, kind of my, my plan is we're going to continue to ramp up the draft profiles. We've already done four of them uh right now so you'll we'll be at one a week and probably start to see two a week here as we again with two picks and or four picks in the top 42 uh selections for the sharks that's a lot of ground to cover so we've kind of done most of kind of the the top 15 i want to try to get the top 20 really solidified here uh and then we'll focus on you know end of the first round beginning of the second round picks and those guys that are going to you know can you find those quentin musties can you find those you know um like th those guys who are going to be potential diamonds in the rough right so we're going to continue to do that we'll have bigger draft conversations like i said trading up trading down what what should the sharks do here um and then i think and then next week we'll we'll can start to kind of dig into this season more at depth right and what what happened this season we'll start kind of doing player reviews on some of the big name players right i'm not going to do player reviews for every guy who played a shift but you know looking at okay what actually happened on william Eklund's season and what's what's next for him and kind of where the steps he needs to take next and can mikhail granlin repeat this next year and kind of what's the expectations for mikhail granlin and you know, is, is Mackenzie Blackwood, is he a long-term answer? Like, we'll start to have those types of conversations here. And again, we'll start to preview free agency, which is exciting because um, we haven't been able to do that here at Locked on Sharks uh, since Locked on Sharks started because, again, the Sharks had no money to spend. So, um, yeah, plenty of good stuff. If you like team building, off-season, like, this is, this is my favorite time, especially because – Again, we don't have to watch nine to two losses for a while. We can continue to think about the next good Sharks team and how how do we get to that next good Sharks team. So, um, yeah. Let's get ready to talk about some of future Sharks, hopefully, uh, here in just one second. 
We've all been there either as a player or a fan. It's halftime, and the scoreboard is not looking good. You feel low. You're not sure if your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as possible. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you complete, compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime, and with a ton of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Like You can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards, make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball, charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put it on your game face and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or on Google Play. All right, so the NHL scouting, uh, Central Scouting released their final prospect rankings so the way they do it if you're unfamiliar but they kind of they break it into north american skaters international skaters says european russian etc cetera, etc cetera, uh north american goalies and international goalies again north american u.s canadian like so, so um no we'll start with the north american skaters and kind of again look at guys who are you know some guys who moved up a ton some guys you know kind of some of their their final rankings um no surprise macklin celebrini finished first he was the one at the final ranking or midterm rankings one at the midterm um presumed number one pick in the nhl draft like it's Macklin celebrini's world and we're all just living it um lev Shinov, the michigan state defenseman finished second uh katie lindstrom the big boy center from uh, medicine hat uh finished third z booyam who's he steals my heart uh finished fourth zane perec finished fifth so he jumped from 10 to five uh with his offensive you know we talked about did his profile um if you love defenses for nerds go score points um zane perec is right up your alley uh trevor conley who dropped one spot from five to six we haven't uh talked about him yet we're trying to get that one scheduled here soon sam dickinson uh seventh captain uh berkeley captain uh eighth uh tj ginla ninth and uh, michael uh is it hague or Haj? uh excuse, he finished 10th carter yamachuk 11th so he was a uh, six at the midterms and huge drop to 11 nicole eiserman uh 12th 8th to the 12th so um the sharks are gonna have good players with that penguins pick so and uh, we'll continue to, to to kind of hone in on some of these guys here so um thought it was interesting that how much zane Perek dropped um and then carter yamachuk um and cole eiserman both kind of uh, taking uh, some drops there too Z Bouillon is is going to be, I know a lot of Sharks fans, myself included, that is the guy we're kind of targeting with the Penguins pick. And we'll talk about the path to get to Z Bouillon, but um that national championship performance might have uh might have put him out of out of range here. But again, we've seen plenty of uh plenty of GMs fall in love with very tall right-handed defensemen. So uh speaking about a very tall right-handed uh defense uh actually i don't think he's right-handed but very tall defenseman six foot seven uh anton Solyev. he actually finishes number one um in the international uh rankings uh ivan demidov uh finishes number two Kansa helenius he actually was one at the midterm dropped to three um but still Kansa helenius is, is great adam adam Yurchek uh finished fourth michael uh bransgard uh Nigard, Bransek Nigard, excuse me uh he finished fifth um, Emil Hemming, uh, was sixth, uh, he, him and, uh, MBN kind of flip-flop spots there. Uh, Leo Salen Wellness, uh, he finished seventh. So he jumped up from uh, 11th to seventh. Um, and then some other guys here that we'll, we'll kind of get to as we get, kind of get into the draft, uh, process more. So, um, for the goalies, Again, well, this you never know with goalies is such a weird kind of weird class, but uh, Mikhail Yergev, uh, who uh, USHL defense or goalie, excuse me, from Omaha, uh, he finished the rankings at the number one uh, North American goalie, going from fourth to one, six foot four. So we know 
how much um Mike Greer really likes tall defense or tall goalies. I don't want to keep saying defense, but tall goalies. Um, you know, you look at Mackenzie Blackwood, you look at Romanov, you look at Cooley, um, very tall, athletic, like I think I don't see Mike Greer drafting a short shorter goalie. So um Carter George, who was uh, first um, but dropped to second, he's a six foot one goalie um, in the OHL with the Owen Sound. Uh, Lucas Machek, uh, he finished third. He jumped from nine to third. Uh, WHL for Tri City, six foot three uh, goalie. Nicholas Kemp, uh, who is second in the midterm, finished fourth. And then Dawson Cohen, who is uh, WHL goalie in Spokane, um, finished fifth. As for international goalies, Emil Vini, um, Finnish goalie, six foot three, uh, finished at one. Uh, Ilya Nabakov, uh, six foot goalie, 179 pounds in, from Russia, finished second. Kim Serene um, from Finland, uh, finished third. Um, and then Pavel Mojcik from Russia, Mojcik, Mois, uh, finished fourth. And then Martin uh, Heronik finished fifth. Um, so, that is kind of your 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 top end of of the uh, NHL Central draft scouting, or that's your final rankings here. Um, as we kind of get, we'll start to get some other guys' final rankings. Remember, Bob McKenzie's kind of like his rankings because he talks to scouts and he pulls scouts, so his are very. He drops one usually right before the draft, um, and he's pretty good about it because again, uh, who he talks to. So we'll. Um, keep tracking these. We'll, we'll start to do some mock drafts here, uh, which I'm very excited for kind of doing some mock drafts. We can do kind of the first two rounds and see who's available for the sharks, all that fun stuff. So, um, that's going to do it for me today. We'll be back on Monday to start, uh, start the off season. We'll look at some of the biggest questions surrounding the sharks heading into this off season and, uh, try to at least look at some potential answers. So uh, make sure you guys are following wherever you get podcasts. And of course you can watch on YouTube as well. Um, also want to thank you guys again. Um, this season has been long. Um, and if you watched one show, if you watched every show or listened or watched one show, listened or watched to any, all the shows, um, if this is your first show, whatever, just thank you guys for the support. Um, it's hard to come on here and talk about a, a team where you after you've lost nine straight games or 11 straight games and um, you're trying to glean and, and find something positive to talk about. Um, and it's it's been hard. I, I will not lie. It's been a very long and challenging season and um, such as the life of being a, a tank commander um, and you're hoping for something better soon, but you still have to live into the, uh, the day to day of, of covering a, a bad team. Um, so thank you guys for, for supporting me and hanging out with me and just, you know, making this much, much more manageable than it actually is. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're ready to turn the page again. How do we build the next great San Jose Sharks team? Uh, how do we start building off of the rubble that was this season? So uh, we'll start answering those questions. Uh, so again, wherever you listen, wherever you watch, or if you watch on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. Until Monday, we made it, friends. <laughs>